places. Hi guys, welcome back for day 24. This is the final day of the evidence in the trial. Yesterday we heard from Paul Greenery, who cross-examined Ian Fitzgibbon. Then we heard from Richard Pratt and James Witham. Today that will continue. Tomorrow we will have a live as a jury deliberate as they consider their verdict. During the live, we'll read through the closing speeches and the judge's summary. But for now, let's go back to Richard Pratt and James Witham. So Richard Pratt, King's Counsel, rises. Richard Pratt says, you've told the jury that none of your previous convictions involved any association with firearms. Before August the 20th, have you ever handled a firearm before? James Witham says no. Richard Pratt says, if we could resume the sequence of events, the Hyundai is travelling down Linster Road before turning right onto Prescott Road, driving away from Forty Linster Road. Who was driving the car? James Witham says, it was me. Richard Pratt asks, were you on your own or with anybody? James Witham says, I was on my own. Richard Pratt asks, where did you go? James Witham says, I just drove down, dropped into me nan's, me dad's, me nan's dead, but I still call it me nan's, my home address. Richard Pratt says, then what did you do? James Witham says, I went to me nan's for a minute, then took a long walk, went and knocked on at Joe's. Richard Pratt says, how are you feeling at that stage, with reference to drinking drugs? James Witham says, don't know, my head was still battered, like, but I didn't know what I'd done. I didn't know until the morning what happened, like. Richard Pratt says, yes, we'll come to that. What did you believe you had done? James Witham says, just basically shut the house up. Richard Pratt says, you went for a long walk. Is that in the heighten area? James Witham says, in the heighten area, yeah. Richard Pratt says, you told us that you called at Joe's house. James Witham says, I knocked at his. Richard Pratt says, why did you do that? James Witham says, I don't know why, my head was a bit fucked like. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to go back to the flat and I went and seen Joe first. I had nowhere else to go. I didn't want to go home. I just parked the car at my nan's and went for a walk, clear my head a bit. Richard Pratt says, you went to Joe's house? James Witham says, I knocked at the door. Joe looked out of his window in his bedroom. I heard the dogs barking as well. He come out. He was in his pyjamas. I said, walk around the flat with me, lad. He got ready and walked round with me. Richard Pratt says, given you said you felt you'd been belittled or embarrassed by now, Barry, why did you want to go back there? James Witham says, Basically, I had nowhere else to go. Richard Pratt says, is that what you did? James Witham says, that's correct, yeah. Richard Pratt asks, we see you and Joseph Piers arriving at 267 Pilch Lane at 25 past one in the morning. You are at that time apparently wearing a coat. James Witham says, uh, yeah. Richard Pratt says, had you been wearing the coat during the course of the shooting? James Witham says, no, I was in the car. It was in the boot. Richard Pratt says, was it your coat? James Witham says, yeah, my coat. Richard Pratt asks, why did you put the coat on? James Witham says, it was raining, you see. Richard Pratt says, some evidence was given by a forensic scientist to the effect that it seemed to smell of detergent. Did you wash that coat? James Witham says, um, no. Richard Pratt says, your fingerprints, your left thumbprint, were found a box of bold washing tablets. Also, your thumbprint was found on a bottle of comfort fabric conditioner. Do you know how your prints came to be there? James Witham says, I had a shower in that flat and I had done a wash as well. I washed a few towels. I must have moved stuff around. Richard Pratt says, the two of you go into the flat. Do you remember who was present? 
James Witham says, yeah, yeah, Niall, Kershaw, and I think Zest was in bed. Richard Pratt says, did you actually see him? James Witham says, yeah, I seen him, but he was in bed when I first went there. Richard Pratt says, what was the atmosphere like? James Witham says, it was alright basically, yeah. They was all half tired. It was a bit late like when I got there. Richard Pratt says, what was everybody doing? James Witham says, watching stuff on the telly. I sat down on the couch and had a split. Sat there for a bit in silence. Richard Pratt says, at any stage did you have any discussion with anybody about what you had done? James Witham says, yeah I did. Richard Pratt says, who did you speak to? James Witham says, Niall. Niall and Kershaw were sitting next to him on the couch. Richard Pratt says, at that time, was Joseph Pierce present? James Witham says, no, I waited for Joseph to get off. Richard Pratt says, had you in the war or when you'd arrived at Joseph Pierce's house, told him what you had done? James Witham says, no. I don't think I spoke to him that much on walking round there. Richard Pratt says, was the decision to wait until he left, was that a deliberate decision? James Witham says, no, I don't really know Joe enough to tell him something like that. I was a bit ashamed, I didn't know exactly what happened. Richard Pratt says, when was it you told Niall Barry? James Witham says, I just said I shot Saz's house up there. He wouldn't believe me. He started going on. You're chatting shit, lad. You haven't done nothing. I said, here you are. I just shot the house up, basically. Told him. He was shouting a bit at me and going on and saying, what are you doing at the flat and that? He was obviously stressed out. Richard Pratt asks, did you tell him why you had done what you'd done? James Witham says, I said he's a rat. He's been robbing me for years now. It's got to the point where he needs to stop doing it. Richard Pratt says, had you discussed the problems you'd had with Lee Harrison? James Witham says, no, I hadn't spoke to no one about it. Richard Pratt asks, did Kershaw join in on that conversation? James Witham says, a little bit. He wouldn't believe me, basically. He ended up getting off him. Richard Pratt asks, how were you? James Witham says, still shocked, basically. I was still a bit drunk though. Richard Pratt says, It's been said that you were frothing at the mouth and worse to that effect. James Witham says, I was a bit drunk like. I don't know anything about frothing at the mouth. Richard Pratt says, You waited till Joseph Piers left. We can see Joseph Piers leaves Pilch Lane at 16 minutes past three. At 39 minutes past three, Michael Kershaw leaves. We're going to also say that yourself leave Pilch Lane at 19 minutes past four. If the conversation you had was after Joseph Pears left. It must be some time after 16 minutes past three. If Michael Kershaw was present also, we know he left at around 39 minutes past three. It's in that time scale. James Witham says, yeah, that's correct. Richard Pratt says, after that, at 39 minutes past three, Michael Kershaw has left. Before you leave at 19 minutes past four, what was going on in the flat? James Witham says, nothing. Zest went back to bed. Niall was in the living room. I went and sat in the other bedroom. I had a split. Sat there thinking for about half an hour. Nearly fell asleep. I got off then. He also says he walked home and he went to bed. He adds he was woken up by his dad. This was around 10 o'clock. He goes on to say, he said Sean's girlfriend's sister just be shot dead in her house. Richard Pratt asks, did you know what he meant? James Witham said, when he said it, then yeah, I did. Richard Pratt says, you knew it was Ashley Dale? James Witham says, yeah, sorry. Richard Pratt says, when he told you that, what did you think? James Witham says, I just went and got a cold shower and sat on the floor for about 40 minutes in the shower. My head was still battered. Still is now to this day.
still don't believe it's happened. Richard Pratt says, what conclusion did you draw? James Witham says, I just thought it's me that's done it, obviously. I couldn't believe it myself. I never felt like that in my life. I thought I was having a nightmare. I didn't know what to do with myself. I just got in the car, walked round the corner, got in the car and drove to Joe's and asked, is there anywhere I can store this car? Richard Pratt asks, the car you're referring to was? And James Witham says, the Hyundai. Richard Pratt asks, what did Joseph say to you? James Witham says, he said, yeah, he'll phone his mate and meet him in St. Ellen's at about three o'clock and gave me an address to go and meet him. Richard Pratt says, what sort of time was it you were having this conversation? James Witham says, about half ten. Richard Pratt asks, having made the arrangement, what did you then do? James Witham says, then I drove the car back to the village hotel. Richard Pratt asks, did you explain why you wanted to store the Hyundai? James Witham says, he knew it was in a car crash the day before. He knew I was waiting for it to get fixed. I just wanted to get away now. My head was done. I'd never done anything like that in my life. I never told him nothing. I couldn't tell him nothing. I felt so ashamed of doing it. Richard Pratt says, you were then telling us where you took the car. James Witham says, yeah, just by the village hotel, just off Wishton Lane. Richard Pratt says, why did you go to the area in particular? James Witham says, don't know, it was the only place I know where there's no cameras. Richard Pratt says, do you know that area for any reason? James Witham says, my sister's little nephew lives around the corner. There's a little lake there as well. Richard Pratt says, what were you intending to do? James Witham says, I parked the car up, took my clothes and the gun, put them in a bin bag, took some bin bags out of the bin and just put them in the bin. Richard Pratt asks, where had the gun been after you used it to fire shots at Linster Road? James Witham says, I pull it in the boot. Richard Pratt says, you put some clothes in the bin. James Witham says, me clothes I had on that night. Richard Pratt says, what about the shoes? James Witham says, I put them in the bin bag, yeah. Richard Pratt says, specifically, where was this? What did you do? James Witham says, I walked near the park. I went to my sister's. I took a few bin bags and put the bin bags over it and I left it in the bin. He also says the bin was just off Wishton Lane, near to the hotel. James Witham says there was a big alleyway with a row of bins. There was a load of bins there. Richard Pratt says, what then did you do? James Witham says I had a little walk round the park and walked to my sister's. I had a split with my little nephew and got a black taxi home. Richard Pratt says, after that, you got home. You told us earlier you made an arrangement to meet Joseph Pearce. James Witham says, between three and half three, he said. Richard Pratt says, did you make your way there? James Witham says, I left me nan's about quarter past two. I got a black taxi to the car and drove to St Helens. Richard Pratt asks, when he drove to St Helens, did you meet up with Joseph Pearce? James Witham says, yeah, I met up with Joseph Pierce. Joseph gave me an address and I met him there. I was on my own. I just pull it in the car up the path. Redgate, Redgrave Street or something in St Helens. Richard Pratt says, did you see anyone else? James Witham says, just a lad who lived there. I didn't get a look at him properly. We got a taxi. We was going to get a sauna and a steam, but the facilities wasn't working. We've ended up getting a taxi home. He was supposed to be staying with his girlfriend, sir. I've asked if he could book me a room. Richard Pratt says, where were you going to go? James Witham says, the Mercure Hotel. I asked Joe, does he want to go for a swim and a steam and that? The facilities wasn't working, so we got a taxi home. He went to his and I went back home. Richard Pratt says, you are there at the reception desk at 27 minutes past 8. You arrived there in a taxi. 
James Buffum says, uh, yeah. Richard Pratt says, the booking of that hotel was carried out by who? James Wyvern says, by Joe. I asked him to book us a hotel. Richard Pratt says, had you told him about what happened? James Wyvern says, no. He wouldn't be speaking to me now if I told him that. Richard Pratt says, why did you want to stay at a hotel? James Wyvern says, my head was battered and I was sidled. I needed to be round someone. My head was fucked up. I bottled it all in. I'm a private person. I don't tell no one nothing. And that's what I do. Richard Pratt says, We see you at a hotel reception. We see you shopping in Liverpool. We see you in the restaurant. You know the pictures we are referring to. To be frank, you don't look particularly troubled. How were you really feeling? James Wyvern says, I still couldn't believe it happened. I tried to bottle it in, tried to keep it all to myself. Richard Pratt says, This is you and Mr Pears leaving the Mercure Hotel. You are about to get into a white van, linked to Joseph Pears' father. We're on August 22nd. Do you recollect doing that? James Wyvern says, Yeah, Joe said his dad was in the area and something about KFC and that. Richard Pratt says, We move on to the 23rd of August. You are checking out now at the Mercure. We're about to leave in a taxi. This is images of you shopping in L1 and you have your son with you. James Wyvern says, yeah. Richard Pratt says, you're buying a different type of trainer. James Wyvern says, uh, yeah, I always buy trainees all the time. I had to get rid of my other ones, so I needed a pair. Richard Pratt says, you appear to change your trainers while you're in the restaurant. James Wyvern says, I just wanted to put them on. Richard Pratt says, were these trainers, the ones you were taking off, the ones you had worn? James Wyvern says, no, no. Richard Pratt says, they were not the ones you were wearing at 40 Linster Road. James Wyvern says, no. Richard Pratt says, there's a deposit of £1,000 a larger amount than you normally paid in. Where had that come from? James Wyvern says, just off drug dealing. Richard Pratt asks, why was it a larger amount than usual? James Wyvern says, because I knew I was going out of the way to Scotland, so I took it in case I needed it. Everywhere is cashless now. I took my son to the Everton shop and ZZ and you need a card for that. I knew what happened. I needed to get out of the way for a bit. I was going to Scotland anyway. Someone owed me money up there through drug dealing. Richard Pratt says, There is a record of a trip. Your phone number is self sighting up in Scotland. At the same time, a phone associated with Mr Pears is making the same journey. James Witham says, I asked Joe if he could get me a lift up to Scotland and I pay him to do it. Richard Pratt says, Who took you to Scotland? James Witham says, Me? Joe and the fella who gave us a lift. Richard Pratt says, That is on August 23rd. You stay in Scotland up until the 26th. Where have you been staying? James Wyvern says, I have friends up there, live up there, who I do a bit of drug dealing with up there. Richard Pratt says, Were you and Joseph Pearce staying in the same place? James Wyvern says, No, he stayed in his uncle's home. Richard Pratt says, there is then the return journey. He goes on to say, there is a booking described as being unsuccessful in your name for the night of the 26th of August in Wishton. James Witham says, I used to always stay there. Richard Pratt asks, why was that unsuccessful? James Witham says, I don't think there was enough money in my bank, I couldn't recollect, I never ended up going there. Richard Pratt says there is a series of text messages between him and his sister during the trip. Richard Pratt goes on to say, can you remember anything about those text messages? James Witham says, no, no. I can remember sending it. She wasn't answering the phone to me. Richard Pratt says, we do see there are a number of attempted calls. This is in context of a search warrant being executed at Ashby Road 
your home address. When you got that text from Julie, why you wanted to speak to her? James Bloom says, I was trying to phone to see if she was in. I was nearly home, you see. Richard Pratt says, at the same sort of time, you are making eight attempted calls to your father. James Witham says, yeah, to see if he was in. I had nowhere to go. Richard Pratt says, were you aware there was a search warrant taking place at your house? James Witham says, no, I did not, no. Richard Pratt says, another booking was made for two rooms at the Mercure Hotel. He goes on to say, you and Joseph Pierce arrive at the Mercure Hotel, having been dropped there in a white transit van by, it is said, Joseph Pierce's father. James Witham says, Joe said he's staying there with his girlfriend. He was supposed to stay there the week before. I said, book me another room. Richard Pratt says, why didn't you want him to go home? James Witham says, I don't know. My head was still a bit, I don't know, I wasn't thinking. Richard Pratt says, you're checking out at the Mercury Hotel. We see you're making a further trip to Scotland. James Witham says, yeah. Richard Pratt says, in an Audi Q7, were you driving? James Witham says, no, I wasn't driving, no. He also says, Joseph Pierce's uncle was driving. James Witham says, I used him to get lifts. I never told him nothing. I was ashamed. I knew he was legit with his bank card and that. If I asked him to get a room, he wouldn't say no. Richard Pratt says, Joseph Pierce is using your bank card to withdraw cash. James Witham says, that's the money I said I'd give him for sorting me lifts and that. Before I went to Scotland, I passed him my card and said, take what I owe you. He also says Joseph Pierce and booked him a hotel room at the Mercury Hotel in Aberdeen. James, James Witham says, that was me again, using Joseph to book a hotel for me. Richard Pratt says, why did you get him to make the booking? James Witham says, I don't know. I wasn't thinking straight. I had no ID myself. I thought I'd asked him to book me a hotel. Richard Pratt says, when you were in Scotland, you were staying until September the 2nd. Did you leave the Mercury Hotel on September the 2nd? James Witham says, yeah. Richard Pratt asks, where did you go? James Witham says, went and stayed with my friends in Aberdeen a couple of days. I can't really remember. He also says that he and Joseph Pierce were stopped at the M6 in Cumbria in a black Audi Q7 on September the 13th. Richard Pratt asks, where had you been between September the 2nd and the 13th? James Witham says I was just drug dealing when I was up there. Richard Pratt asks, in Scotland? And James Witham says, yeah. Richard Pratt says, this is you returning to Merseyside. You are arrested on suspicion of the shooting of Ashley Dale. You give a false number. Why did you give a false name? James Witham says, I knew I'd been wanted for that. Richard Pratt says, you were arrested. You went no comment in the interview. You did say certain things to officers saying the car was Davos. You were being stitched up. It's not right. I'm being set up. He crashed the car. You need to do more inquiries on the car. Why were you saying those things? James Witham says, I was just stressed out. I shouldn't have said it. I was lying then. I should have owned up from day one and I couldn't do it. I was so ashamed. Richard Pratt says, you served a defence statement which denied involvement in the shooting. James Witham says, yeah, that's true. Richard Pratt says, then on September the 21st, the court was convened so you could enter a plea of guilty to manslaughter. James Witham says, uh, yeah. Richard Pratt asks, why did you decide to plead guilty? James Witham says, because it ate me inside. I hadn't slept for a year. I'd been having nightmares all the time. I've got other people arrested who had nothing to do with it. I regret it so much and I've got to live with it for the rest of my life. It was just a warning. 
just shot into the wall. If I knew anyone was there, I would have drove home. And Richard Pratt says he has no further questions. And that is the end of Day 24, Part 1.